for me, animals have always been a, a powerful source for me. Like I derive a lot of soul feeding, like nourishment. I think they nourish me more than I nourish them. I was born in a small town in Wisconsin, and I felt like I had so much freedom as a kid to just leave the house, go explore all day long, go to the lake, go fishing, go poke around for turtles and frogs. Those were the things that were really important to me, and uh, I think that's influenced me kind of forever. One of the first weeks of work in Southeast Alaska as a fisheries technician, we were doing a snorkel survey for steelhead um, in the springtime, and I had never snorkeled before. We sort of get out there, get in our suits, and had to hike way in. I'm sort of disoriented, probably, and snorkeling is not necessarily a natural feeling, like breathing through a tube and floating down river into who knows what. Uh, I was pretty nervous. But we got um, you know, a mile or two in and I was starting to relax a little bit and somebody from the bank sort of yelled at me, hey, hey Betsy, don't move. <laughs> and I could see them like right at the edge of the distance there was a pair of uh, steelhead on a red. So I totally froze and I was able to just drift past them and they didn't even move. Like, I got so close to them and it was so uh, incredibly impactful. That's when I knew that I wanted to be part of that ecosystem, help recover populations and degraded habitat to reconnect those dots. Salmon are such a powerful connector of things, of how uh, communities and biology and everything is connected by, by one species. I see the people in Forks, and I think another one of those threads that weaves them together pretty tightly is this dependence of their economy on salmon. But I do also see that cultural significance of these fish among the communities and tribal members that have been here for, for generations. There's a lot of reverence. Salmon are so motivated and resilient. I mean, they will batter themselves against dams or waterfalls. Like, their drive to keep going to do their job helps me stay motivated to do my job. I'm really trying to help them do the work that will benefit everybody. So that is not necessarily glamorous on an everyday basis. There's a lot of phone calls and grant applications. Like, you know, this work, even if it's kind of a daily grind, um, at the end of it, there's going to be something that happens on the ground to help make habitat better for salmon. And I think there is a potential for it to really be a win-win situation. If we can put people back to work in these watersheds where they grew up and help make uh, habitat better for salmon, like everybody is going to benefit from that. I thought about ways that my life history might be like a salmon's. <laughs> And I think I've always been motivated maybe by forces I didn't quite understand to explore new territory. And I think that there's a correlation for that in salmon, like where every generation has a, a certain percentage that strays out. So they go out in search of new habitat to colonize. And I, I think I see that in myself a little bit. Like they also do that for reasons that they 
don't understand. It's hard to be away from my family, but it would be hard also to not keep chasing my, my dreams. I spent a long time kind of without roots. Um, and I think now being able to physically grow some roots, plant some plants, and know that I'm gonna be there the next year. That part of it is really helping me grow my attachment to this area and this ecosystem. Like, I've, I have my own place in it now. I'm Betsy Creer, and I was born in Fredonia, Wisconsin, and I live in Forks, Washington. <laughs>